It's a special day at Horton School, the smallest school in South Gloucestershire. The nine children of years five and six have been making an animated film, and today they're showing the finished article to the whole school. A hundred years ago, Edgar Degas made a sculpture of a little dancer, Marie. This is her. The animated film was the brainchild of higher-level teaching assistant and ICT coordinator Sarah Taylor, who, due to the small size and resources of the school, takes on extra teaching responsibilities a few hours a week. The film has taken four morning sessions to put together. In this program, we'll be showing you how Sarah managed the project, and she in turn will be watched across the weeks by two experts in the field of animation. Diana Bogey, Continuous Professional Development and Creative Partnerships Advisor, and filmmaker Kari Nygaard, who also teaches animation in schools. For this project, Sarah is bringing together two QCA units, Art Unit 6A, People in Action, and ICT Unit 6A, making a multimedia presentation. The class has already done some work on the Art Unit in the last half term. Can anybody remind us, mind the class, what we did for people in action last half term in art. Yes, Bonnie? Um, we made pictures of um, mostly ballerinas um, or dancers. Why, why, why did we choose ballerinas in particular? The first step was really to decide on a story that we'd use for the animated film. And in the library, we had a book about the, the little dancer and Degar. And because we'd covered um, Degar as our artist in, in the art subject, we thought that would be a good starting point. So we were looked at diagonal shapes, blurring, to give the impression of dancers. So we're going to try and move that on now. We're trying to bring movement into our animated film. Now, we've discussed before that we were going to use Dega and the Little Dancer as the basis for our film. Yeah. And what we've done is come together and produce one storyboard so that we've got, a, it's like it's going to be our script really. All right, this is the plan that we're going to use to produce the film. All right, I've, after our discussion last week about the story, but I've tried to write that up, but obviously I'm n not very good at doing art, so I've just done um, the scene that we're going to cover, the characters that are going to be in that scene, and then I'm going to leave you to do the narration. This is really, really lovely that I take in this book. Uh, it's very appropriate. It book is. About movement as well, about ballet. Uh, and about Degas, which is, yeah, yeah creates a really nice framework for, for working. We've got an action plan, or I've got an action plan, which I hope you're all going to agree with. Should we run through it? Yep. Yeah. To make sure everybody's clear what we're doing. We've got our storyboard. We're going to just go through our storyboard again to make sure everybody's happy. We're going to make the models, Chris. What really appeals to me about um, animation, or what is very appealing about animation, is, is this sequencing narrative because young children do have a tendency when they're telling a story to jump very much and they won't make much logical sense. Mm. By breaking it down and breaking it down, I do think it really helps their, their narrative skills mm. and their storytelling skills. If you remember in the story, um, it started in the museum with the guard of the museum telling, starting to tell the story of the ballerina and he was looking at the statue and I think that's a good place for us to start. Right, who's going to do what? <laughs> who, can we, sorry, could you just patch the box of the, the model so far? Who was, who was making Degas? Hello. You? Hey. Right. Well, what they're doing here, they're going straight into working with the plaster scene because we can't have a great big ballerina and a very small Degas. I would advise them to do some drawing beforehand, to yes. do some sketches in their sketchbooks yes. of how things are going to look like. And who you were doing somebody, the father, yeah. Chris? I've only really got a head. A head, oh, well, that's, well, that's a start. But think about every, look at, when you're making them, look at everybody else's. Okay. So we've all got about the same size. Right. I decided it, plastering was the obvious because I thought it would be the easiest for them and they would enjoy using it. Um, and also we'd, we'd looked at some clips of earlier animation and they had used plasticine, so that's the way, the way I decided to go. I think they need to be quite chunky, don't make them too thin. 
They're making ballet dancers, which it, and ballet and chunky doesn't really come together. No, I think that's very interesting that maybe they're creating problems for themselves in that the medium that they've chosen is not actually appropriate for the subject matter. No, no. I can imagine ballet dancers with tissue paper and moving across sort of very light, but you're not going to be able to get that, that, that movement. Don't forget these ballerinas will probably have hair. That's really coming on beautifully. Shannon, I like that. <laughs> that looks fine. What have you... That oh. looks fine. No. Let's have a look. Make it really thin and then just spread it around the skirt because you've done the body. Do some of this. It's quite Here. soft. Excuse me. That's really good, April. I like it. It's funny. Funny and good. And good. Oh, All in one. The teacher says that she's not very good at doing art. Mm. And I think, I think that she's proved herself wrong here because she is creating something really special for these children and with these children. And it's not about, um, as we talked about, it's not about so much about the quality of the product, it's about the process as well here. Right, can you leave everything where it is now because it's playtime? After play, we'll carry on. Put, put your plasticine down. Yellow. Yeah, no, Okay. Right, are you ready everybody? You might need to wash your hands because they're all sticky from the plasticine. And I'll see you after play. The bell's wrong here. and they are still there? I know, I know. They're, they're, they don't want to leave, do they? It's time you lot to get out. It's time to come in again. It really engages the children, doesn't mm, it? It does. It does. You can see the excitement. They really want to do more of it. After break time, the children finish off their models and background and then prepare for the next stage, filming. What we're going to do first is look at the first scene of our storyboard, which is set in the museum. And we're going to have the statue in this picture and the guard. I'm a bit concerned about that the, set up the, back. the background is actually not yes, stuck right, down with anything. So. She's got a tripod, that's very good. Let's just get her hands behind her back. They were. It's not very clear though. Do you need to come in closer? Um, we can it's see that clear. one, it's just that blue one just looks like a black shadow. And it looks very dark, the scene. Yeah. Is, is there going to be enough light? It's no. A black shadow. There won't be enough light. And the, they're also filming towards the window on a bright day, which oh, is not ideal. <laughs> Take a short clip like that, and then we'll move it take a clip. So we're going to build up lots of short clips that we can then edit when we go on to the upper mic, all right? Sarah is using a digital camcorder. The idea is to film very short clips, moving the characters a tiny bit each time. By running these clips together later, it should give the illusion of movement. One thing that I think animation really promotes is patience, perseverance, um, persistence and if anyone knows sort of programs like building learning power um, um, these are key competencies that children should be taught because they're life skills these models are nice though they are but they're very they're very thin and I, I can tell by looking at them they won't be able to stand oh that no there you go <laughs> Bonnie, just to do a running repair on that a minute, please. Repair. <laughs> Turn him again, perhaps move in a little tiny bit. There we go. Yeah. Careful. No, you move, actually physically move the tripod. They appear to be moving the tripod and not using the zoom. Mm. You perhaps move out a little bit because we've only got a tiny bit of him in there. Now, what's going to happen? There's going to be huge jump cuts. Right. And also with all the movement of the camera, it's going to look like um, NYPD Blue or something like that. Oh, right. Every, everything will be moving, yes. zooming in and out. Tiny movement. Right, if we just stop everybody, everybody wants to stop what they're doing. The class has to stop filming mid-scene and will have to wait a week until their next ICT lesson to complete it. What we'll do is we'll check where everybody was positioned for this scene and then we'll set them up again for next time, all right? The plan today is for one half of the class to start editing the film already shot, while the other group continues filming the remaining scenes. Who can remember how to download? Who's done downloading before? Who's not done downloading? 
With ICT resources becoming cheaper and more available to schools, making animation has become a real possibility for most classrooms. We could call it the little dancer, couldn't we? Yeah? I think it's so commendable that she is really taking a risk here, isn't she? She's going with something that, you know, she's obviously sort of enthusiastic about. And excellence and enjoyment is all about teachers taking ownership of the curriculum again and going where your interests lie and where the children's interests lie. Every time you've pressed the record button, it shows up as a new clip. And it's as We've simple got as the that. Cat things on it. Look, you can see April's face. <laughs> well, we can use, we can learn from that. We'll just have to make sure that when we're filming the next. Got that April's oh, we're face very careful, there. yeah, with our backgrounds. This teacher is learning such a lot that the fact that it's not turning out the way that she would plan it is fine. And it's great that she is taking a risk, she's being creative, and the thing about creativity is that things do go wrong. And that's how you learn. Right, that was from the previous. Well, we can get, we can get rid of that. That was from when we were filming in art, OK? The editing team is using a movie-making program, selecting downloaded clips and dragging them onto a timeline to edit. We're um, putting all the clips into like a long line and then we'll crop them all so um, that each clip is only a few seconds. Um, long, and then we'll um, add in like um, speech, narration, and then um, it will soon hopefully be a movie. Alex and Chris have been assigned the job of finding suitable music. <laughs> and once they've narrowed it down to two tracks, the whole class takes a vote. Number one. First one. And for the second one? First one. Well, I think the first one. Yeah. Now, you just have to make the dancers dance to this music. Can you do that? Yeah. And we finished the audition. It takes the class two more sessions to complete the filming and editing process. By the fourth week, years five and six are finally able to share their film with the whole school. Whilst the other dancers performed at the Opera House, Marie modelled for Degas. Her legs hurt, but she held her position. So she didn't quite find her dream, but the story isn't quite finished yet. One day, Marie got a letter inviting her and her parents to go to a museum exhibition. They saw a model of Marie. Marie's dream, well, it really did come true, didn't it? It's fantastic to see a teacher really engaging um, with something that is stimulating for the children. Um, she's obviously got an interest in, and she's prepared to take a risk, which is wonderful, as you say, it, it is to be applauded. Well, I think the children really enjoyed the experience. I mean, there's lots of things we can take forward to, to improve the next film. I mean, we could see parts of the children in the background, so we'd work on backgrounds. Obviously, our models needed the help of cocktail sticks, so I think perhaps need smaller, stouter models so that they don't fall over. And the biggest development is that we I went, recently went to a conference and they showed some animation software which we've, we've since bought, which we can use with iMovies, so that's really our next stage. If you'd like to know more about how you can do model animations in your school, log on to this programme's page on the teachers.tv website. Bum.